We're live. We're live. What comes after that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to day two. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a comp- Michael, how are you? Good I'm, morning. Hey, man, that's not about me, you know? No, it's not about you. You know who it is about. Catherine Winder here, uh, our special guest this morning. Catherine, would you tell everyone at home and Michael what it is exactly <laughs> that you do? With Skybound? Yeah, with Skybound. I am the uh, CEO of Skybound North. Uh, my job is multifaceted. We've got uh, a couple of companies up in Canada. We're mm-hmm. producing a show for AMC. Awesome. Which is a secret hero, uh, a secret history of, of comic books. And then uh, we also have a slate of animated properties that mm-hmm. we're, we're producing and developing. So it's, it's really fantastic because there's a lot of uh, creative opportunities up there. And this is very exciting because uh, you're working on some secret stuff as well that we can't really talk about. But um, we're actually going to do a panel tomorrow. You're going to be on a panel at Comic-Con tomorrow that I will be moderating. And then maybe we'll be able to talk a little bit more of, about the secret stuff there. We don't want to reveal anything yet. No, but we can hint at it. We can hint we at it. fun with that. Yeah, would you like to hint at anything at all right now? <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have an awesome history uh, in the animation world. You are responsible for uh, bringing to life a lot of really big franchises into the Clone animated. Wars, Angry Birds. Yeah, Angry Birds. Well, the Angry Birds movie. Yeah, and then the Clone Wars television show, which is yeah. a very amazing show. Tell, can you tell us a little bit about what it's like adapting large properties into animated, uh, you know, series, what films, what have you? Well, I think what you got to do is look at the property and determine what the best medium to adapt it into or format. So is it right for TV? Is it right for movies? Is it right for shorts or all? Mm-hmm. Um, and then figure out who the best talent is to put around it. I- I've been really lucky because I have worked on some massive brands. Uh, Star Wars, for example, had a huge responsibility. Yeah. I was the first person that um, George brought in, and I was his producer, and had to find all the right people to protect his property, ensure the integrity is intact, and that it worked in animation. Sure. Um, so I look at every property uniquely. No one size fits all. Mm-hmm. So you've got to find the right people and the, the right way of, of producing a property. What, what is the process like? I mean, is it literally just a meeting with, with people where you're just like, is this going to be a TV show? Is this going to be a movie? Like, do you have that meeting? Or, or do people kind of already have the idea of what the property will end up being based on, like, the idea they already have? You know what? Again, every situation is unique. Someone may come to me and say, we want to make a TV show out of this. Or in the case of Angry Birds, it was a movie that was a commitment from Rovio, the gaming company that owned the property. They were determined to make a film to really expand and continue the brand forward in a whole new way. That's awesome. Has there ever been like an argument of like, this should definitely be a series? And it's like, no, this should be a movie. <laughs> Have you ever been in that kind of a situation? I'm in one right now. Oh, currently. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Let's talk, um, let's talk a lot about it, say names. I can't. <laughs> all, all I'll say is it is another massive brand. Mm-hmm. Right. And I believe that it should start out as a feature film, but the owner is looking at a TV series, so we're having a lot of discussions Doesn't around that. Does it usually that. go from like a feature film to a series? You know, there's no hard and fast rules. Sure. Uh, certain properties start out as TV, and then they launch into a movie, or they're a movie, and then they become a series. It just depends on who's behind it, financing, right. and and then there's so many business, um, you know, concerns or not concerns, considerations right. to uh, to take into account. Sure, I mean, I uh, growing up, we we would watch cartoons all oh, the time, awesome. and and you know, it, there was never really a rhyme or reason whether it was like an animated series first, like your Ducktales, for example, right. Right. that then became a Ducktales movie, or you know, vice versa. I just it's it's interesting though, because to me, it always felt more comfortable for it to be a feature film, you fall in love with the characters, You, especially if it's a new IP or if it's kind of like, which is kind of not really a thing that's done much anymore, but when it was a new IP, you'd be excited, you'd meet these characters, and then they'd announce an animated series, and you're like, oh great, we get to know these characters even better. You get to see them every week. Yeah, which is kind of what happened with the Clone Wars, I feel like, the Clone Wars cartoon. Well, the Clone Wars started out as an animated series, but we were really excited with the direction and the look and the feel and where it was headed, and we thought, why not do a limited release feature film to kick it off? 
Mm -hmm. So that, that one was a really organic decision to go into feature film and then the series. Right. But the series started. Right. So again, each situation is, is unique. Uh, you know, the thing about feature films is it's a, to do it big, it's a huge bet and mm -hmm. risk. There's, sure. It's, uh, you know, the budgets, a low budget feature film is probably in the 50 million to 75 million range. And then you have all the, the marketing expenses, promotions, all of that to consider. So you're easily above $100 million. Sure. Whereas for a series, again, depending on the property and the way you make it, you're probably a $10 million all in wow. commitment, maybe wow. 20 yeah. for a higher end number of episodes. <clears throat> uh, so you can see that from a business perspective, and that's bottom line where it all comes in. Right. Unfortunately, it's sure. not always the creative. Right. Uh, you have to weigh all your options and figure out you know, what kind of stomach you have. What, how much risk are you willing sure. to take? Sure. Mm -hmm. right. Wow, so that's a, it is a big risk. And then I yeah. bet after a while, a lot of it's on reputation too, huh? Like about how like you've taken other projects and uh, you know you find success with this or you don't, so they're more reluctant or oh, kind of like your resume. You mean like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. This is one right. piece of paper that you carry around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I've worked on this. <laughs> yeah. But well, I think to that point, it's it, it's less likely that you're going to do uh, a feature film based on a new IP. Mm -hmm. The the risk is too high. Uh, buyers, distributors these days want some kind of brand recognition that they can fall back on. Now, it doesn't have to be the brand itself. There could be a creator behind it that's the brand. Right. But there needs to be something there that gives some comfort in advance. Do the you thing think that sells it before you even know what it is. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Do, and do you think those days are kind of gone? Like, I, the days when they would kind of, like, try out something as, like, a new, completely new IP, animated film, you know, we're just throwing it out there. You know, maybe it's based on a book or something that's kind of like a beloved franchise, but like it's kind of under the under the radar because it's an older series or something like that. Are those days kind of like gone? You think? Yeah, I don't actually think they are. I think that if you're willing to do a, you know a, a film in the lower budget range, ten million ish around there, they're not gone. There's right. a lot of. I was actually out for breakfast today with somebody who's doing those types of films based on his comic books. I think it's incredible. Right. And then there's Netflix who are sure. taking risks with some of these lower budget animated films. So there's, I think there's going to be more and more opportunities over the coming years. It seems like there's a lot more places to put it now yeah. with uh, Netflix and Hulu and even the slightly smaller kind of on demand things like uh, like S VODs, like you know, yeah, 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 like YouTube Reds or something even all kinds down of stuff on the bottom. Like yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a preference when it comes to 2D animation or 3D animation? Not at all. I, I love all of it. Uh, and what I, I really enjoy about being a Skybound is that we look at every property um, and find the best approach for that supports the narrative. And I've done that all my career. So mm -hmm. if it makes sense to do something in 2D, mixed media, CG, high-end CG, low-end, it doesn't matter. What's whatever's best to make those characters speak to you, sure. speak to your audience. That's good to hear that it's not necessarily based on potential business end ideas, and more towards like what works best for the universe and for the characters. A hundred percent. I mean, ultimately, it, it, it's about uh, creating great, lovable, engaging characters mm -hmm. that speak to people. And whether or not you create them as stick figures or high-end furry, you know, monsters, right. <laughs> right. it really doesn't matter. They right. just have to be interesting. Mm. I really like your position because it's a very like businessy type position, but you're making very artistic choices and like very like high pressure choices. I could I couldn't even, especially with Star Wars stuff. Um, but that's really awesome how you get to like look at stuff and see a vision, and uh, and be an artist from like you know behind the scenes and stuff like that. Yeah, I've, I've uh, really been fortunate. When I look at my career, I've managed to work with some of the most iconic visionaries out there and through that experience have learned that it's, you know, my, my role is to put them at the center, support them, bring the best talent around them so that they can tell their stories however they feel they're best told. Which is right. what Skybound's all about. Which basically. is 100%. Yeah. So I feel like I found the right home yeah, when, when I landed at Skybound because it really is an ingrained philosophy. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, 
if you do your work and you do your job well that way, and they, the visionaries can speak um, the best, in a best a creative manner that best suits their property, the money will come, the business yeah. makes sense, but without that, you really struggle. You start with a group of people that gets it, so you don't have to like, you know, educate them along the way. You're like, you know what this is, we're putting you all together because we know that, you know, you're the people who can make this, you know, what it is, and, and it just, that's awesome. Yeah, so. I mean, I've never done a project for, uh, just because, you know, it pays well. It's, right. It's never interested me. It's been all about the property and the creative voice behind it. Mm -hmm. So how do the fans factor into this, this kind of storytelling structure? I mean, especially with a series as beloved and big as Star Wars, you know, the fans are so finicky. This, they're so, they're, it's a very sensitive thing. Like, how do you handle high pressure, kind of like high, you know, the, the, the big properties as far as fans go? Good question. Do you just not go on Twitter and check this out? <laughs> I just hide, <laughs> Or message right? board yeah. or Reddit? Um, well, often we'll work, I'll, I'll set up um, an environment where we're working almost in a bubble, a little bit separate. We don't share for a very long time until we feel like we're ready. And of course we want to produce something that the fans are engaged with, proud of, rooting you know, right behind. But we also have to look at a property in such a way that we know it's commercially going to expand beyond the fans. That's why we're doing it, mm -hmm. and to grow the fan base. Uh, so typically, I hire the nerds that know the okay. property inside and out. <laughs> good, good. This um, is my friend Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are so great to talk to, right? Exactly. <laughs> we just find each other jobs back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> We're multilingual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but I'll hire those experts. I, I'm, I'm a generalist. I'm not an expert. I wasn't. I love Star Wars, um, but I'm not the nerd fan that loves Star Wars. I hired all those guys that were and understood those uh, sort of tipping points that may be critical to the fans. But I also work with them to broaden, not to be too in, because if you get too in, you lose a lot of other people. Sure, right. uh, and you know, when we were, we were developing and producing Angry Birds, same thing. We really had to think about how do we launch these iconic characters in a new way. They were bouncing balls mm -hmm. that didn't speak. <laughs> they have no background, no story whatsoever. Exactly, yeah. which was the awesome part, right? Because we weren't slaves to some pre-existing canon. There was, they each had their own iconic traits um, and that we loved and we used springboards uh, to develop their characters in the universe. But ultimately we had to figure out a way to ensure that we had them articulate, move, have wings, legs, mouths, voices, uh, a point of view that the fans would be excited about, um, that dimensionalized them, uh, but also most importantly would engage an audience on the big screen for 90 minutes. Right. Sure, of course. So do you take like, if for, let's use that as an example, do you take like their special ability in the game and their appearance and build a personality around that? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, you want to take the, the core um, element that right. makes them special, that they're known for, and use that as your, your springboard. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's really fun. And as far as like casting voices, you know, and, and, and bringing, bringing the voice to the characters, these beloved characters, how, how far along into the animation process when making an animated series or animated movie are voices even considered? Again, no hard and fast rule. Right. Um, each property is unique, but in many cases, a writer may already have the voice in their head. Sure. So when they're writing the script, that it ultimately will translate beautifully if we're using an actor to, uh, to help develop the character. But there's also times where we don't know, and then the, ca the character, the actor that we bring in, helps inform and, and develop the character and adds a whole new dimension to them. That's so cool. That seems like it's pretty late in the game too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be that we've, in some cases, it's gone as far as it's been animated. Now yeah. that's your worst case scenario because sure. you really want the, uh, the actor to be brought in as early as possible. Yeah. Because I like to do voice, the voice work uh, before we, as, as we're storyboarding so right. that they can actually punch it up, make it funnier, make it more interesting. Right. 
Smart. That's just fair. depends. Depends your budget. Yeah. yeah. And time. <laughs> right. Listen, so I know there's a lot of things you can't talk about, and I know there's a lot of things <laughs> that will come out tomorrow, so I'd like to maybe do a little exercise. I'd like to pitch oh. you an idea. Okay. Can you tell me if I'm on the right track with this whole thing? Okay. I love this. So, and I don't know how we get this IP. I don't know how we get the license, but okay. Beetlejuice, mm. the animated series, the movie. Oh. I think we're far enough along. You've got the nostalgia factor. At least 12 of us will see it. Yeah, of course. You got to <laughs> Gene, I'll go. <laughs> That's right. Go. I love Beetlejuice. Yeah. That's a great idea. Somebody, somebody was talking about the animated series the other day, and I was like. It's fun. It's about 20 years old, right? It is, yeah. So, so the nostalgia factor is in it's play there. now for it's the parents the and for their yeah. kids. Yeah, and yeah. you walk around yeah. the convention center and you see all the boots, and half the boots are based on like nostalgia-based things, mm -hmm. like even the enamel pins that we were talking about before, mm -hmm. like all the specific nostalgia-based things, like they're all blowing up, and there's like, this seems like the place for it, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a good one. We That's a really talk. fun project. Right. Oh, you guys are going to set yeah. up a meeting. Yeah. Right. Old Hollywood fells over here. <laughs> we'll do lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I got several worse ideas if you're interested. Okay. <laughs> so you've heard of Piglet. <laughs> Just Piglet. That might be tricky. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard-hitting, dramatic series yeah. about Piglet. About Piglet. Yeah, it's dramatic. It's gritty. It's like The Wire with Piglet. Right. And I'm yeah. flexible, but I see it in claymation. Yeah. The hardest type to do. Hey, we should do a show short around that. Sure, why not? That's nice. kind of fun, right? Mm -hmm. Have you actually dealt with stop motion animation? Or like with- I thought you were gonna say Piglet. Have you ever dealt with Piglet? <laughs> <laughs> What's your history with Piglet? Piglet, uh, not, not, not a deep history. Yeah. Um, stop motion, I have, I've done a little bit in terms of a short, but not, not that much. And that's not intentional, I just haven't had the right property or situation, sure, but sure. I love it. Right, cool. The so, work at Leica is incredible. Oh yeah, Leica yeah. is, they're, I mean, they're amazing. Yeah. They're, they've made a name for themselves with some really incredible stuff. And I hope they keep doing it. I know that kind of medium is a little tricky, I mean, as far as like budgets go and kind of like, Especially IPs, they kind of develop their own IPs. Yeah. And, uh, well, there's Robot Chicken guys. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I love their work. And sure. that's even become really unique to them. You yes. know, people know them for that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything specifically that maybe you were a fan of throughout your life that you would love to, to work on in a, in a realm like this? Um, well, probably a fan. Uh, one of my favorite directors is Brad Bird. Mm -hmm. I love... Um, Iron Giant. That yeah. was one of my favorite films in The Incredibles. So maybe one day getting to work with him would be sure. pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And the story around Iron Giant is insane too. Just like the whole, the politics, the the backstory. It's pretty yeah. interesting mm -hmm. stuff there. Multi, and that's a great Multi-layered, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do you ever go back? It sounds like there's a lot of like, you take it from a you know smaller thing and either it's a comic book or an app and you turn it into a bigger thing. You ever, um, talk about or or visualize turning maybe a bigger property something that like skybound has and turning it into like a smaller like a mobile app or something like that do you go backwards as well absolutely well what we do at skybound is we have what we humbly refer to as our wheel of awesome mm -hmm. <laughs> and heard of it, heard of it. <laughs> yeah and and we have the ability through all our different departments to take say an app and turn it into a um, a series or a VR piece, we, we can go all different ways. Yeah. We've got the ability to take um, even a toy and turn it into an app or a game or, um, you know, or, or a show, yeah. a short. Sure. That's what's cool about Skybound and just the, the, the deep pool of, of uh, IP. Well, and there's a lot of, I mean, Skybound is developing a lot of franchises too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like really cool franchises under the Skybound banner. And how many of those have been considered uh, for animated properties? Well, um, that's our, our secret That's the secret, now, yeah, right? we're delving because into secret zones. We're, well, be, we've just recently announced that we've, um, we're doing animation. Right. Uh, we do have an animated series that's, that's in production, which we're really excited about. Um, and there's a number of our properties we're looking at with the, the animated um, medium in mind. Right, right. Yeah. To talk about mm -hmm. for years to come. I know, I can't, I, I would love to hear Robert's take on kind of some of these ideas, or even DA, like I know that they're they're very creative people, and uh, 
I'd love to hear their kind of take on, you know, what, what properties would be best suited for animation and which would be kind of like, eh, I don't know about that one. Like, Even you some know? of the games. Yeah. You know? Well, we're developing uh, one of our games in VR, the Giant Cough I talked about right. the other yeah, day. Yeah. We're, we're developing that with uh, into an animated property right now. Which is awesome. perfect. So that's because, a lot of fun. Yeah, Giant Cop is such a fun concept, and it's so strange and fun, and it just seems Irreverent like, and quirky. Yeah, it's so, it, yeah. And when you've played Giant Cop, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so fun and weird. I mean, you just pick up anything and throw it, and you're just this giant cop. Right. And I just love the idea of, like, what would an animated series about a giant cop be? And I already love it. I yeah. already am. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and what's fun for us is we, you're, you know, as you as you play the game, you're the cop, yeah. but now who is he? Yeah, that's where did he come from? Get to Who's know. behind the hands? Who's behind the hands? And that's that's what I love is is bringing in uh, the team to figure that out and working with them. Mm -hmm. And it turns out we were the giant cop the whole time. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> <laughs> the soft music you. plays. <laughs> <laughs> the giant cop was in us. I want to know who the giant cop is. I want to know who Sunbather on the roof is. Yeah. Where yeah. does giant cop live? Yeah. You know, what, what, I can't tell it? you that yet. Yeah. That's a big I mean, secret. I I'd, have to, I'd have to sue you. Uh, <laughs> or, or arrest you. Um, but no, but that, that's really what I love to do is, is figure all that out. That's so fun, and I love the idea of it skew. I mean, the game is very tongue-in-cheek and fun and cheeky, and I'd love to, I, I mean, I, I'm hoping the animated series kind of follows along that 100%. irreverency. Yeah. yeah, we've got some incredible uh, incredible creative team behind it. That's so very we're cool. ensuring that. Um, and what we're doing at, at Skybound is we've, we looking, we're looking at some of these books that are adult, so we can do animated fare that's in the 18 to 35. There's sure. a lot of that. You know, the challenge is actually trying to control ourselves. There's so many to choose sure. from. Um, and then we've also just announced uh, a family property. Uh, can I talk about I it? I think you yeah. can, right? Can she talk know. about it, Cruz? We're not the people there. to ask. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he says talk about <laughs> it. Go okay. for it. So it's called My Singing Monsters. Which I love, by the it's way. It's really fun. Very fun. And we're going, again, this is Skybound, so quirky or reverent. Right. It's, it is a musical game. It's an app. It's got 50 million users, created out of Canada. Uh, by 50 million and one, because I just recently got it, and I can't put it down. I really, really can't. It's so fun because, like, and I think you'd love it, Mike. Have you played it? I haven't played it it's yet. It's so cool because the monsters are all, like, they, they're all singing different parts <laughs> of this like grand monster orchestra, uh, for a lack of a better description. And, and, or I'm sure you have a better description, but. No, it's good. What, what I have. <laughs> yeah. It's on it's, the back of the box. <laughs> it's like, I'm just reading the back of the box. Um, no, but, the, but each monster is singing and they kind of harmonize together into this like really fun, catchy music. Yeah. And it's actually like, for me, I love it. I think the music is really, really fun and cool. It's like, it's not just your typical kind of like MIDI, like little synthesized sounds. It's like actual voices and like actual instruments. And there's like synth monsters and there's like violin monsters. And it all feels like organic. Design. Yeah, it's really cool. And you position them wherever you want. And it's fun. And I love the idea of a singing monsters show. That's crazy because I love music. I'm a musical person yeah. as well as Michael Falzone. So like I love the idea of like potentially a new song every episode or whatever. Like I don't no, want to delve it. too no, much that's, into that. That's the idea that that's we'd great. have a new song in theory every episode and you combine all these different characters and they make different sounds and but what's exciting is similar to Angry Birds, these characters mostly have musical sounds. Yeah. They don't have a voice but they have a sound and those are those those iconic characteristics. How do we build off of them and, and use the universe that's already there and expand it? Right. How long until we get kind of like a crossover with a behind the music type things where we learn all about the recording process, <laughs> <laughs> we learn about maybe some infighting. <laughs> We'll show you that. Mike, Mike Cruz will be uh, filming all that. Oh, Thank great, great. Right Cruz now. will yeah. be doing the behind yeah. the scenes. Can't wait to see it, Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at us like he has no what? idea More what's work? going on right huh? now. <laughs> <laughs> and so, our, so, so I, know, I don't want to talk too much about my singing monsters, but okay. just because I don't want to get poke you for any secrets or anything, but I do love that some of the monsters, like you said, it sounds like some of the monsters speak exclusively in song. Yeah. Is that kind of like, is that going to be, is that a challenging element as far as like storytelling goes? 
Well, at this point, no, because I think we add to it, and in most sure. of you, not everyone, we're still figuring that out. Do we give them voices? Um, we're at the very early stages of this. We're, we're figuring out which characters we might focus on. Oh. Should we share that? We might focus on, might not. The tambourine monster. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe the one that bangs his head <laughs> Anyway, it's all, all early days, but um, maybe next year we'll be able to share more. Okay, okay. Right? So I want to switch gears a little bit okay. and talk really quick about, um, you mentioned kind of like more 18 to 24 skewing animation. Yeah. And you have a history with doing some kind of more mature animation with the Spawn animated series. And yes. Eon Flux as well. And Eon Flux as well, which yeah. we're huge fans of, yeah. by the way. It confused me so much as a kid. Oh, yeah. In yeah. so many ways. I mean, I came into adulthood in some ways because of the Eon Flux. <laughs> yeah. Let's cut to a clip. <laughs> 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 um, but no, I mean, um, with, with series like that, do you think that, because it seems like nowadays there's definitely kind of like a more crude adult humor skewing animated series, but what about kind of like more along the lines with Skybound's darker properties like yeah. Walking Dead and Outcast? Do you see animated series that are kind of like violent and dark and, and have more of a uh, dramatic storyline coming into play more in the future of animation? Absolutely, there is definitely a market for it. Um, Eon Flux maybe was even ahead of its time. Of course, you know, I agree with thank, that. Thanks for, yeah. you know, Liquid TV was incredible, sure. and MTV and all that they did. Um, HBO took uh, a risk, it was sort of off-brand to take Spawn and develop it into the animated series, but what an incredible opportunity, and it did really, really well. It was very cool. It was, and we, we again, wanted to make sure that we were true uh, in adapting that comic and the whole sensibility. That was, that's a pretty heavy storyline. Of course it is. I know a lot of people who went from the series to the comic book. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. It opened up the comic book world to a lot of people who hadn't read them. Right, yeah. right, right, yeah. exactly. But it seems like, uh, again, given all the new opportunities in terms of distribution, that this is the time, it's ripe for, for more adult, dramatic, animated fare. And working with Skybound, I'm pretty determined to do that. That sounds awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. the kind of stuff I'm looking forward to, for sure. Because, I mean, there's obviously a place for the family-friendly stuff. And yeah. I think stuff like My Singing Monsters I probably will get a super kick out of because I love the game so much. Your house is going to be filled My with My house is going to be filled with toys and stuff. But I mean, I love <laughs> stuff like Samurai Jack, which I think oh. skews more towards. Yeah, you know, Gendy's um, amazing. Which is an amazing show. And I kind of like how, you know, are artistic and kind of like about these giant sceneries and, and dialogue-less moments and things like that. I love those kinds of, you know, it's, it's, they're kind of switching gears a little bit as far as animation is concerned. I'd love to see that kind of stuff come out of Skybound, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's a natural fit, isn't it? It yeah. absolutely it's a no -brainer. is. No-brainer. Absolutely. It'd be kind of wrong if we didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right. Well, I guess we're. I'm, it's sad that we're done, but I think we we're done? done. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. this has been so nice. I know. Thank wasn't this guys? awesome? Thank yeah. you for taking the time to talk. To it was you. awesome Pleasure. talking to you, and I really wanted to. Like, I think afterwards we could talk about kind of like your awesome. Like, I just want to talk to you about more of animated history because I know you worked with some of the folks from Hanna-Barbera way back in the day. Yeah, and Mr. Like, Mr. Hanna, oh. got to uh, actually work with him. Amazing. That's awesome. And, yeah. and Ralph Bakshi. Yeah, and, I did a show with Ralph, he oh, was a producer. Just, I mean, really, Quite a character. Oh, really? I would oh, love to was, hear some stuff that you actually just can't talk about can't. on the stream at all. <laughs> yeah. so, and especially with Don Bluth <laughs> and, and, you know, and George Lucas. George, and, yeah. So anyway. Yeah, Peter Chung was incredible. Oh, we must fly. talk. Yes. Yes. Anyways, okay. So, someday. but thank you, Catherine, so much for joining us, and thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more awesome stuff on the Skybound live stream. Coming up all day. Uh, there's super fight stuff. What else we got? More interviews, Fear panels. Dead. Fear the, the Walking, Walking Dead. Dead cast. Telltale. Nice. Telltale. Sam Basher will be here. Malcolm Barrett will be here. Friends I've all heard day. Of them. All day, Nicole friends. Brown. Friends for days. Who's this? Yvette Nicole, Yvette Nicole Brown. Brown will be here. Brian will be yelling. Rachel Skidmore will be here. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Cruz will be confused. We'll have several more couches. He's always confused. <laughs> it's all right. You fake it till you make it, Cruz. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more programming. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you guys. Thank it was you fun. so much.